Hey there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming, where once again it's time for the regular rundown of five underappreciated indies, my hidden gems, you might have missed when they first launched. See anything you like? Be sure to let me know in the comments and let's get straight into the action. At number 5, having launched on PC back in April of this year, Zombatron is the follow-up to the much-loved and admired web game of the same name. The story is instantly familiar. You play as Blaze Rush, a mercenary, having followed the signal of a distress beacon to a mysterious and dangerous planet that's overwhelmed by zombie-like creatures. Now I only picked this one up in the last week or so, having once more gotten back into playing run and gun games by way of Blazing Chrome, which came out in mid-July. Zombatron looks and plays like any one of the well-known classics of the genre, with the graphics and overall art style being a true highlight, particularly with the detail in the background scenes and the objects you, the player, are able to interact with. As I mentioned earlier, the overall storyline and its plot is nothing new, although for me that doesn't really matter. It's a fun and enjoyable romp into a genre I'd stayed away from for far too long, and if, like me, you're looking for something to remind you of Metal Slug, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to enjoy picking this one up and giving it a try. Up now in this month's number 4 indie hidden gem is another game out this past April. It came out onto the PC, although we can expect launches on the PlayStation 4, the Switch and the Xbox later in the year. Himno is perhaps an odd one, and while it's best going into it with the view you're taking on a 2D platformer that's procedurally generated, it's also unlike anything I've played all year. To start with, and a first here for Get Indie Gaming, Himno is available via Steam for free. I've tended to stay away from covering free-to-play games, although with this one, there's none of the pay-to-win options usually associated when games are free. While your character also has a baloney great big sword, you never get to use it, nor do you get to fight with any enemies, and likewise, in Himno, your character can't die. No, bear with me, please. While this doesn't sound overly appealing, the enjoyment comes from the tranquil nature of the gameplay and the accompanying soundtrack that fits in accordance with your on-screen antics. Overall, Himno is a relaxing little game and a wonderful stress buster. If you don't overthink it, I'm pretty sure this little gem will find a home in your collection. At number 3 and from late in August last year, Tiny Echo is an understated atmospheric point-and-click affair where you play as Emmy and you're tasked with delivering letters to spirits in the undergrowth. There's no on-screen text or voice acting, with you discovering what's required by way of interacting with the environment around you. Emmy's animation and the hand-painted backgrounds really are quite exquisite, with the colour palette and musical score also being a lesson in communicating and signposting the underlying feelings the devs want you to experience. While delivering letters is the overall goal, to do so requires the player to complete a number of environmental puzzles and teasers, which are in themselves enjoyable and fun to complete. At around 90 or so minutes in playtime, it's on the short side of things, although like Journey, Tiny Echo is one I like to mellow down with every once in a while. At number 2, out in early access back in March of this year, our runner-up for August is Nova Drift. Here we have a game that manages to pull off the reimagining of the super old-school arcade classic that is Asteroid, with modern twin-stick shooter controls together with a kind of roguelike format with ARPG elements thrown into the mix. Things start simple enough, with very few ships and bullets to avoid, although that changes soon enough. It's not too long before you're having to see off wave after wave of enemies in this highly colourful and clever top-down shooter. Much of this cleverness comes from the way the game forces you to adapt your loadout as you play. While just as in other rogues I found myself with a number of favourites, I didn't find a system that felt pretty much foolproof and Nova Drift is better because of it. While out in early access, it does feel highly polished and comes with such a so very silky smooth control system, I'll put it on a par with the best this genre has to offer. If you like your shooters, get this on your wish list today. Oh. 
Do you sometimes feel that everything is just about to happen, while all of it has already been decided? Yes. Stranded in the middle of nowhere. Mr. Tannhauser? My number one hidden gem for August 2019 came out in March of this year on PC and all of the consoles from this generation. Truba Brook offers a reimagining of the classic point and click interactive adventure, with it telling a tale of a young scientist within an alternate reality that uses handmade 3D models, which are for the most part pretty darn breathtaking to look at. These models were pulled together using a method in which the game world is built into a real life model before the scene is scanned and digitally placed into the game. It really is one of the best looking indie games I've seen all year. You play as Hans, having recently arrived in the West German town of Trubabruck, and over the game's four chapters you piece together a compelling sci-fi mystery that oozes charm and offers a script that's almost as sharp as the visuals. Some people will find flaws with some of the puzzle elements that could have at times had better signposting, although all in for puzzle adventure gaming fans, Trubabruck is a real hidden treat to be found. And with that, many thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you all back here soon for more indie game videos.